welcome to episode 63 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth, founder of The Planning Woman and creator of The Planning Woman's 30-day scripture journals, as well as the Live It Out Planner pages. I'm also a time management consultant and a certified life purpose coach. I'm so glad you could join me today for this episode. It is my hope that you will be encouraged by what you hear to be able to live a life of real purpose with a real plan that helps you to experience real peace. Did you realize we are in the last 90 days of 2019? And not only that, we are closing up the last year of a decade. What? I'm not even sure where the last 10 years went. Are you? About this time last year, I released an episode about how it's not too late to set goals during this time of year. I shared how we are really more productive setting goals 90 days at a time. And since we are in the last 90 days of the year, it's the perfect time to set new goals or finish up ones that you've started but not completed. Often we get to this time of year and think it's just better to coast to the end of the year and start over on January 1. And I can see why we tend to do this. The last quarter of the year is very busy with activities ramping up after the summer season, the holidays that take up so much of our time, and just the feeling that time is rushing by. I mean, it feels like tomorrow is going to be Christmas, am I right? However, I believe if we are intentional about setting some goals and working on them these last days of the year, we will be able to set ourselves up for even greater success in 2020 and we can finish this year strong by being diligent in how we spend our time. Now, I'm not talking about setting 10 new goals and working night and day to accomplish them. No, it's more about assessing where we are right now and where we want to be by the end of the year. Let me share some examples from my own life, and then I'll give you some ideas to think about how you can finish this year strong. A few episodes ago, I shared how I was going to focus on getting my eating under control by the end of this year. And while I still have a long way to go, I have been making some progress on that goal. However, because time is passing so quickly and I've had a much busier September than I anticipated, I've got to make a plan for this last quarter to make sure I achieve my goal by the end of the year. And in regards to the planning woman, Well, I always make plans for each quarter that include work I want to accomplish that's done on a weekly basis and also includes goals I have for different projects that I'd like to get completed in that quarter. Right now, I'm working on a new product and service that I'm going to be rolling out next week, and I'll share more about that at the end of this podcast. So getting this product and service launched, along with keeping up with my weekly work, Well, I've got my hands full for this quarter. So how am I going to go about achieving these goals in the last 90 days of the year? Let me walk you through my process and hopefully you'll pick up some ideas that will help you make progress on your goals before the end of the year. First, decide what goal, if you were to achieve it by the end of the year, would make the biggest difference in your life. For me, on a personal level, it is getting my eating under control. Yes, I could focus on exercising, and I will be trying to exercise more, but focusing just on my eating will bring the biggest difference in my life. The way I see it is that if I can get my eating under control by the end of the year, then I'm setting myself up for greater success and change in my health in 2020. Because if I achieve this goal, Then I can begin to work on other aspects of my health in 2020. Does that make sense? For the planning woman, my focus on launching this new product and service will allow me to expand my business in 2020. It's giving me a new avenue in my business to pursue, as well as giving me a way to tie together all of the aspects I want to cover on the planning woman. So once you've determined what goal would make the biggest difference in your life, it's time to make a plan. If the goal you've set for yourself will most likely take the full 90 days to complete, then you can break up your goal into 30-day increments. Before you do that, though, be realistic about how long you think it will take 
to complete that goal. Because according to Parkinson's law, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. In other words, if we give ourselves 90 days to complete a goal, well, it will most likely take 90 days to complete it. So I challenge you to really think about how long you want to give yourself to complete the goal. If there's any way to shorten the time frame, then I'd suggest you do it. Because think of it this way. These last 90 days of the year include all the holidays. Typically, our productivity goes down once Thanksgiving hits. And the time between Christmas and New Year's, well, it's typically a black hole where not much gets done. So, if you're able to at all, I would suggest trying to get your goal completed by Thanksgiving, Christmas at the very latest. Okay, back to our discussion of how to make a plan to achieve that goal. Let's go back to my goal of getting my eating under control. I've decided that I want to be consistently meal planning and choosing healthier foods by Thanksgiving. As of today, which is October the 4th, I have about eight weeks to get this done. So I've created a list of steps I need to complete that will help me to achieve this goal. First, I need to make a list of foods and recipes so I can have a resource when it comes to creating meal plans each week. Ideally, I'll come up with at least 30 different meals so I can make meal plans that are not repetitive and will offer a variety of different kinds of foods. And I'm setting a deadline to get this done by the end of October. Second, part of this goal entails not eating out so much. And this will require me to look at my calendar for the next few weeks and see when I have to eat out because of certain obligations. Then, when I make my meal plan for each week, I can add in a night to eat out. Making it a part of my meal plan should be helpful in cutting down on the number of times that I eat out each month. And third, I need to track the habit of meal planning in my habit tracker. My goal is to do it once a week, so having a place to track that to see if I'm being consistent should help me out overall. I think that if I'm able to check off meal planning each week for the next eight weeks, no matter how perfectly or not so perfectly I do it, I'll develop the habit and will begin to see good results. So what does this mean for your goal? Well, you need to figure out what steps you need to take to complete your goal. Then you need to set deadlines for each of those steps. Now you may have some steps like mine that will take some days and weeks of consistency to see results. And that's okay. You just need to be aware when you're not doing what you should do to see results. Back to my meal planning example. If I notice after a couple of weeks that I'm not able to check off that I've planned meals for the week, I need to reassess what I'm doing because obviously what I'm doing is not working. Staying on top of each step you need to take to complete your goal is a key to your success. Okay, so now we've picked the goal that will have the most impact on our lives, made a plan for achieving that goal, so now we need to implement it, or as I like to say, live it out. I'm all too aware of how easy it is to make plans and never follow through with them. After all, I named my website The Planning Woman because I love to plan. Following through, though, not so much. I've called this podcast Live It Out with the Planning Woman in the hopes it'll keep me accountable to carry out the plans I've made. So that being said, this step of living out your plan is truly the most important. It's where you're going to see actual results and be able to achieve your goals. Because I've had a hard time following through with plans so much in my life, I've been researching ways to help me stay on track so I can follow through. And hopefully these um, ways that I'm going to share will help you be able to follow through with your plans. First, think about what your life will be like if you don't follow through with your plans. For me, it means I'm still going to be unhealthy, I'm still going to be overweight, and I'm still going to be frustrated with my life. So to me, it's very important that I achieve my goal. If you figure out that your life 
may not look too different if you don't achieve your goal, then you may be pursuing the wrong goal. So really think about it long and hard, what your life is going to be like if you don't fulfill that goal. Second, you'll want to eliminate as many obstacles as possible. Often when we attempt to achieve a goal, obstacles will pop up and get in our way, or we become distracted by other things, so it's important we know how to deal with them. I know that I'll be facing the obstacles of overwhelm in meal planning, food preferences of my family, and taking the time to meal plan. I've got to analyze these obstacles and see which ones I have control over and how I can overcome them so I'll be successful. The same is true for you. The more obstacles you can identify and plan for ahead of time, the better off you will be. And third, enlist the help of others to achieve your goal. Often we cannot achieve our goals alone. We will need the help of others. I mentioned one of my obstacles is the food preferences of my family. So one way to overcome this obstacle and to get help is to enlist my family to help me pick out meals for my list that everyone will like to eat. This way, I'm not trying to come up with meal ideas I hope everyone will like. If each of my family members shares their favorite meals, then not only will I have several ideas for my list, then I'll be ensured they will like them. Don't be afraid to ask for help when it comes to achieving your goals. You may have to think creatively to see who can help you, but I promise it'll be worth it. So let's review the three main steps to the process of achieving a goal by the end of the year. Step one, decide which goal would make the biggest impact on your life. Step two, make a plan to achieve that goal. Step three, live it out. I hope you've been able to pick up a couple of tips that will help you achieve a goal by the end of this year. I'd love to hear what goals you're working on. Send me an email at theplanningwoman at gmail.com and let me know what your goals are and maybe what obstacles you're facing in trying to achieve those goals. I would just love to hear from each and every one of you who are listening today. Also, I mentioned earlier that I'm launching a new product and service soon, and I'll be making an announcement about it on a Facebook Live on Friday, October 11th. I'm not sure if it'll be at 8 or 9 a.m. Central, so... Just to make sure you don't miss it, go to facebook.com slash theplanningwoman and like my page. You'll be notified when I go live. I'm not going into detail on this episode about this product and service, but I will share that it is something where I can work with you one-on-one, both in person if you're local to me or virtually if you live out of my area. Next week's podcast will be all about this new product and service, so I hope you'll tune in then. And as always, you can connect with me online on Facebook at facebook.com slash theplanningwoman or on Instagram at instagram.com slash theplanningwoman. I'd love to see you in either one of these places. Strike up a conversation. Send me a message. Let's chat about planning goals Whatever you want to talk to related to the planning woman, I would love to visit with you about. So until next time, I hope you have a great week.